Hey everybody, welcome to Bonnie Bay Crochet. I'm Bonnie Barker and today I'm going to show you how to make the braided scarf. This is one of five designs in my Leisure Art leaflet it's called Noggins and Necks. It's been available for many years now and it also has a matching hat and this video is already up on my channel so if you either go to my home page and you should be able to find it there or look in the video description below and I will put the link both for right and left handers so and if you are a left hander and you're just now coming to my channel for the first time I have left-handed videos for everything that I do so all you need to do is do a simple search in that search bar to find the video that will serve you best well, let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need for the braided scarf. For this project, I'm going to be using Universal Yarn Uptown Worsted. This is an anti-pilling 100% acrylic yarn. Each of these skeins has 3.5 ounces or 100 grams or 180 yards. You will also need a crochet hook. I'm recommending size J or 10 or 6.00 millimeter, but do check the written pattern for the gauge information so that the hat will fit you well. And I'm also recommending that you have a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors handy. The written directions are available exclusively in the Noggins and Necks Leisure Arts leaflet. And inside this leaflet is also included four other hat and scarf sets. All of the stitches for all of these projects are available on the Bonnie Bay Crochet YouTube channel. But the complete video tutorial that we're going to be covering today is going to be for the braided hat and scarf set. To begin, we are going to start with a slip knot. And we're going to use a starting chain of 19 chains. Once you have those 19 chains, we are going to start row one with a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And I'm going to work a single crochet in that chain and in each chain across. At the end of this row, you should have a total of 18 single crochets. So this is what you should have after completing row one. Now we're going to turn and work row two. We're going to chain one. We're going to single crochet in the first three stitches. We're going to work a popcorn in the next stitch and we do that by working four single crochets in the same space. just like that, pull up the loop, and then we reinsert our hook into the very first of those four single crochets, and then we grab the loop again, and then pull it through, and then we give it a chain. And the popcorn should pop like that. If it's not protruding in that way, then you may want to pull it out and try again. Okay, so now we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches. Now we're going to work front post double crochets around the next six stitches as follows. We're going to insert the hook around the body of the stitch like this. Let me, let me do this again. So instead of working in the top loop of the next stitch, we locate the next stitch. We're going to wrap our hook for a double crochet and we're going to wrap the hook around the stitch like this. And that is a front post double crochet. We're going to do that over the next six stitches. This is preparing for the braided cable section. And that should be six stitches. Let's go ahead and give it a count. One, two, three, four, five, six. And after that, the next stitch, notice that the next stitch is here. You don't want to work it here. Work it in the loops of the next stitch. We work one single crochet in each of the next two stitches. And the next stitch, we're going to work 
another popcorn, which is four single crochets in the same stitch. Pull up the loop, insert the yarn in the first of those four stitches, grab the loop and pull it through and give it a chain and then single crochet in the last three stitches. So this is what you should have at the end of row number two. Okay, so for row number three, we are going to turn, we're going to chain one. Okay, so now for row three, we're going to single crochet in the first six stitches. So those three single crochets, we work single crochets in those. We work a single crochet in the top of the popcorn stitch. Um, notice that this little section here is part of the popcorn, so you want to be careful not to add stitches there. And then single crochet in the next two stitches. So we should have a total of six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. Now we're ready to work the braided cable. It's going to seem a little tricky starting it from the back, but I think we will, I will try to help you understand it. We're going to be using back post double crochets, not trebles, but double crochets. We just wrap the hook once. We skip the next two post stitches and in the next two, we're going to work back post double crochets like that. Now working in front of these two stitches as seen from the front side, we're going to come around and we're going to work first back post double crochet over that first stitch that we skipped. And notice that these are going to be in front of the first two. And then the next one, we work a back post double crochet. And then now we go to the last two stitches that we have not worked, which are over here. And we're going to work back post double crochets over each of them. I know this is really awkward at first. So what I would recommend is that you watch a couple of rows as I do them so that you understand this concept before even trying this. Okay, so now we're going to work single crochets in the last six stitches. So one, two, and the third will be in that top of the popcorn, and then the last three stitches. Okay, this is what it looks like from the back, which doesn't really look like a whole lot. And this will always be the front side. And you can see that when we work those back post double crochets, how they crossed in front. Okay, so now I'm going to work row four with you. And just an, just an added tip, the odd number rows will always be the back side facing. The even number rows, or the even or the front side, will always have the popcorns and the braid clearly being shown. So for row four, we're going to chain one, single crochet in the first three stitches. We're going to work a popcorn in the next stitch, which is working those four single crochets again. Pull up a loop, insert the hook into the first of those four stitches, and then pull it through and give it a chain single crochet in the next two stitches. Now I'm going to show you the braided cable. Again, this is using front post double crochets. Many of my designs will use this stitch working with trebles, but this is working with doubles. Okay, this is what, how we do this, and you'll be able to see it better from the front side. Skip the first two stitches, and then we're going to front post double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Working in front of these two stitches, we front post double crochet in the two stitches that were skipped. 
And then now we front post double crochet in the last two stitches. And now these may be hiding behind these other stitches. You can find them by looking at the top or I would highly recommend you use the sensors in your thumb and fingers here so to help you find these stitches just like this. Now we single crochet in the next two stitches, popcorn in the next stitch, which again, four single crochets, worked in that same space, pull up a loop, insert the hook into that first of the four stitches, put the loop back on the hook and pull it through and give it a chain. And then single crochet in the last three stitches. And let's pause and take a look at what we have. So now for the remainder of the scarf, we are going to repeat rows three and four. And uh, remember four is the row with the popcorn. Row three is with the backside facing and I will show this to you again. Repeat rows three and four until the scarf measures approximately 58 inches or the desired length. So let me go ahead with row five, which is actually an exact repeat of row number three. And for that, we single crochet in the first six stitches. So it's those three single crochets, single crochet in the top of that popcorn, and in the next two single crochets. Be very careful that you don't add in extra stitches <clears throat> excuse me, in your scarf, because if you add extra stitches here, the scarf will become wider and you don't really want that to happen. So now with the braided cable, we're going to skip the next two stitches and then the next two, which you see are already on top. Those are those two that we're going to work our back post double crochets over those. So one, two there. And again, working in front of these stitches as seen from the front side, we're going to come back and work these two stitches. You can locate them with your thumb and fingers there. And I'll show you. There's one. Again, I'm showing the back side here. And there's the other one. And then after that, we do the last two, which we see are here. I can feel them probably better than I can see them, but one is here and one is there. Go ahead and grab them. Now this is a rather tightly woven braid as you crochet this. It's not one of the more looser varieties. It is, is rather tighter um, crocheting. Okay, so then after that we single crochet in the next six stitches, which is those two single crochets, the popcorn, and then the last three single crochets. chain one. So that was a repeat of row three. Now we're going to do another repeat of row four, even though this is technically row six. Okay, so for this, for the repeat of row four again, we single crochet in the first three stitches. After that we form a popcorn again. By working those four single crochets in the same stitch. Put that hook into the first of those four stitches, grab the loop, and pull it on through and give it a chain. Now we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches. And now we're ready to work the braid again. Skip the first two stitches. And the two that we work next are always going to be on top there. They're going to be the the texture that you can see and feel. So one, two front post double crochets there. Working in front of those two stitches, we come back to work the two post stitches that we skipped, which are right here. And then we have the last two stitches, which are hiding underneath the texture. You can see them from up here. Again, use your fingers and thumb, 
to locate these stitches. Here is the first of the two and the second. Again, this is an intermediate project and and um, these this particular stitch can be pretty tricky. So definitely go slow with this and give yourself time to work on it and to learn this. Okay, so I've single crocheted in the next two stitches. The next stitch we work that popcorn stitch again. Pull up a loop and pull that on through. Give it a chain and then single crochet in the last three stitches. So that is a repeat of row four. So again, repeat rows three and four over and over until the scarf measures approximately 58 inches or the length that you desire. Okay, I've repeated this pattern again and again until the length of my scarf is approximately 58 inches. Of course, you can make this as short or as long as you wish. Okay, and I have ended by working row three, which is the row with the back side facing. And so now I've chained one. I'm going to give it a tug and I'm going to fasten off right here. Make sure that you leave a generous strand because it makes it so much easier to hide the loose strand. So I'm going to give you just a really quick tutorial on how to do that right now. We're just going to thread this into the yarn needle and you can see having a longer strand makes this so much easier. And with the back side facing, we are going to weave this down in to some of the stitches here. I'm going to actually, let's go ahead and bring this across a little bit. And I'm going to bring these down into some of these other other stitches. There's no particular rule as to how to hide these, but I think it's a good idea to to hide under a number of stitches. And if you can go in opposite directions when you hide them, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Now if I bring this down, and then maybe go the other direction. It just makes it a little bit easier to keep this from unraveling. And I can even go back up into that there. That should be very well hidden. And I always like to give a little tug back so that I know that that strand is secure. And then clip close to where your work is, but be careful that you don't clip the work itself and that strand is now hidden. Some of you may have noticed that this scarf may not be altogether flat and can use what we call blocking. And um, I just wanted to show you what I've done. I have um, affixed the scarf with my blocking combs. And let me show you what these are. Um, they're little combs like this. They are rust proof and they will help to lay the scarf flat and I have stretched it just a bit so that there's no buckling whatsoever in the scarf and then once I have it laid out flat the way I want it to be especially the ends um, the ends do tend to curl a bit so if you go ahead and block this it'll help some of that and after that I just lightly spritzed it with just some water um, you can even use a steamer if you wanted to as well um, but I just want to do that. And then I'm going to let this air dry overnight. And the scarf should have a much better shape to it. For those of you who would like to acquire some of these things, I do have some links in the video description below. 
but honestly, you can just use regular pins and even, um, you know, other mats that you can get from Home Depot and uh, other places like that. You don't have to get real fancy with it, but if something is something that you can add to your tools, should you think you'll be using this in the future. Well, I hope you enjoyed making the braided scarf with me today. I would love to hear from you. Please feel free to comment in the comments below. God bless. Bye-bye.